10 years ago, I graduated from these seats. Engineer. Two years, I did my PG. And after that, I entered my profession. Technology marketer, something that I love doing. Being an engineer, technology fascinates me. Being a marketer, people intrigue me. In my role, in my domain, technology has grown leaps and bounds. We have bots that are sending out emails. We have bots that are doing social media posts, internal and external communications. We have AI applications that is doing creative work for us. Now, it's a good juncture for you to ask, so what? Think about it for a moment. You are, as students, going out into a world where there are machines out there that can do things that are far more precise, far more efficient than you, demanding far less in return. We have bots today that are fighting wars. We have bots that are being developed to play sports. Where does that put us in the spectrum of things? Do you remember a few months back, there was a controversy in the chess world, when Grandmaster Magnus Carlsen came out and said something, do any of you recollect what it was? It was a cheating scandal when the Grandmaster told that the moves that was being played by the opponent does, did not resemble that of a human being, rather it resembled that of a computer. Now, what I want us to focus on over here is that 25 years back, when the computers beat the humans for the first time in the world of chess, it was the best of the computers, the highest of the computing powers, the best of the engineers, IBM, that beat Gary Kasparov. But in this case, it is a device that fits into your pockets or into your bags. That is the world that we are in today. Not the premise of a James Cameron movie. This is the world that you will be going out into. Now take a serious moment and ask yourself, in this world, what differentiates you? What is the value that you bring for a company or for the society. When there is something that is far cheaper than you, that does things better than you, what is the value that as humans, as people, we provide? Care to venture a guess? A thought that gave me countless sleepless nights. And hopefully because I had to go through them, you don't have to. And what I came to understand is that the value that we bring into the society, the value that we have always brought in, has been the same and will continue to be the same. And that has not been efficiency. That has not been mind-numbing precision. Rather, that has been ingenuity and innovation. Or in other words, creativity. Looking at something and bringing about a perspective that only we can. Creativity. Our proclivity to question things, question processes, question systems. And to ask, because of our laziness, a simpler, a better, and a faster way. Creativity. The urge because of which we sing, even though there is no rational behind it. Why we write, why we speak, even when it costs our lives. An urge that is so rudimentary and fundamental and deep-seated into all of us. Creativity, that is what differentiates us. And that is what has always differentiated us. Now, the moment this word creativity comes into the foray, one thing that happens is half of the crowd disconnects. And the reason for that is because there's been so many myths, so many stupidities that has been built around this word, so many biases. A lot of people think that my profession doesn't have a scope for creativity. A lot of people say that I am not the creative type. And that is fundamentally because we've been maligned by an understanding of creativity that is not correct, that is not aligned. And that is where this conversation is going towards. You saw an equation a little bit earlier, E is equal to mc squared. Do you remember uh, seeing that on the screen? Do you know who came up with that equation? Albert Einstein, who came up with that equation, said something that goes like this. Creativity is looking at what others see and thinking what no one else has. And if I were to condense the contents of my 10 minutes over here into one sentence, that'd be that and I can just walk out. But what I hope to do is, I hope to elucidate that a little bit more and make it a little more accessible. Looking at what others see is looking and seeing the objective reality that is there in front of us. The actual problem, the world, that what is constant to everyone sitting. Seeing or thinking what no one else has, what is it? Now this is where the details come. Seeing what no one else has seen or thinking what no one else has thought 
is not an active pursuit. Rather, it is a function of who we are. It is a function of the diverse backgrounds, the diverse sensitivities, thoughts, cultures that we come from. It is who we are more than what we choose to do. And when we marry these sensitivities, when we marry these backgrounds, these cultures, these diversities that we come from to the problem, to the objective reality in front of us, we get a creative outcome. Now, again, coming back, we need to demystify certain myths to understand and make creativity more accessible to the layman, to you and me. One of the biggest myths that I've seen, or one of the biggest myths for me has been, it has got everything to do with art. The moment you use the word creativity, people start saying words like Keats and Kelly. People start saying Gaudis and Van Gogh's. People start saying Lenin's and Lamar's. And you think that that is the only thing creativity has anything to do with. But what about the guy who was sitting in a desk, in a patent office, the most boring workplaces, the bo most boring of the workplaces. And in his head, he went to the moon and came back. And using that, he prophesied a theory that led to the equation that you had seen in front of you. Albert Einstein. Was he not creative? There's a tournament that's happening in the world out there right now. And there's this guy who is called Zinedine Zidane. Now, there was this unique guy who could see spaces that nobody else could. 21 other players on the pitch, 100,000 uh, 100, spectators. None of them saw, but there was this one guy who could see those spaces and who delicately danced over that like gravity didn't exist. Was that not creativity? What about the chefs and the carpenters? What about the sales guy who can sell salt to the sea? Is that not creative? What about the engineers and the architects who built buildings that lasted the test of time, that had lasted longer than any of the creative works that you call creative or art today? Buildings that have lasted millennia. Is the engineer not creative? Now, my premise is that there is no job that is not creative. And the other side, the counterpoint of that is, you can take the most creative of jobs and templatize it and suck out the creativity from it. It's about how you approach things. You can be in the business of selling books or you can be in the business of building worlds in the minds of people. You can be in the food and beverage industry or you can be in the industry of seducing people's taste buds. You can be selling things or you can be a storyteller. It's about how you look at things. Myth number two, some are born creative or even worse than that. Creativity can be taught. Join my YouTube course to become a creative person overnight. Now, both are true. Both are untrue. How can both be untrue? Both are untrue because one is partially untrue and the other is completely untrue. The part that is completely untrue is that creativity cannot be taught. Creativity is something that you are. It is a function of where you come from. It is the most rudimentary elements of what makes you. Which is why the creativity of a Hafiz is different from that of a Kabir, which is different from that of a Rumi, which is different from that of a Shakespeare, from a Kalidas and from a Tagore. Because you cannot emulate creativity. Because creativity comes from a very personal space. It cannot be taught, it cannot be programmed, it cannot be templatized. What about the first part? Some are born creative. That is only wrong because it's not some who are born creative. Any person sitting over here with a unique approach towards a particular problem, towards life, has creativity inside them. Developing this creativity is also an organic process. It is not something that we do in a conscious way. In the sense that every experience that we have, the fact that you're here, the fact that you came from a particular place, it keeps on organically and naturally upbringing your creativity over time. It's a play of nature and nurture. Well, then, if everyone is born creative and everyone has creativity inside them, then what stops all of us from putting our best creative foot forward? Why are we all not creating creative outputs all the time? And the reason for that is because you and me and all of us stand in the way of that. And how is that? We had spoken earlier about distractions. We are constantly distracted today. Or in other words, we are never bored. And boredom is the mother of creativity. Therefore, it is not by chance that 
it was a man who was sleep, uh, who was taking a bath, bath naked came out with abstract scientific ideas and therefore it was not by chance why stories of wizards came to a woman who was traveling by the bus and it is not by chance why enlightenment came to the person who was sitting silently doing nothing under a tree because it's precisely this boredom where our creative mind interacts with the problem in front of us and when we zap away these creative spaces when we zap away these silent spaces when we zap away these bored spaces what we are doing is we are inhibiting our creativity we are standing actively in the way of our best creative outputs think about that we lead a world today in which we juggle between screens we go from one screen to another to another and somewhere in between that we lose something that is most valuable for us we lose our bathrooms because bathrooms are not bathrooms anymore are they bathrooms are rooms where we scroll bedrooms are rooms where we scroll dining rooms are rooms where we scroll classrooms are rooms where we scroll auditoriums are rooms where we scroll is that what life is all about to reclaim your creativity reclaim these creative spaces reclaim the classrooms reclaim the bathrooms reclaim your silence reclaim reclaim your right to your silence reclaim your creativity problem number 3 myth number 3 the biggest of them all it's all about originality dear friends at the risk of angering or at the risk of being controversial originality and creativity has got nothing to do with one another we live in a world where we steal our words from our parents where we borrow our phrases from tv shows from the books we read where we borrow our intellect from the textbooks that we've learned from where in there is there a scope for originality what is originality don't get confused i'm not saying plagiarize there is a very critical difference between plagiarism and the copying that i'm talking about plagiarism does not add any value plagiarism does not add any meaning what plagiarism does is a mindless copy of something whereas the kind of creative copying requires you to meditate upon a thought and to reflect upon it and to bring a flavor of yourself into it so copy borrow steal copy borrow steal but do that with an intention to add a little bit of value a little bit of meaning a little bit of yourself into the process steve jobs and i borrow this from him said that creativity is all about connecting things when you ask creative people how they did something they're often shy because they don't know how they did it they just saw something isaac newton i steal from him when i say he said i saw further than others because i stood on the shoulders of giants take a moment and try to understand what he meant over there therefore please go ahead copy copy but with an intention to add a little bit of meaning a little bit of understanding from your side myth number 4 and the last one and the biggest one our creativity has to somewhere result in an output that gets us money fame applause now here's a fundamental problem based on whatever we've spoken creativity is something that is a process that's very internal the moment we externalize it we lose something about the sanctity of it because the moment we start doing it for others we stop doing it for our ourselves think about it is a great work of art let's say a book let's say an author let's say a stephen king let's say a uh, jk rowling or a jrr tolkien the books that they've come out with are they great because of a certain something or is it because they sold a billion copies think about it does the value of the knowledge that we get from a scientific theory get extenuated because it won a nobel prize or that has no effect whatsoever does the output have anything to do with the actual process of creativity the moment we start focusing on that we stop focusing on what makes it meaningful in fact the only purpose of creativity is to add meaning into our monotonous lives the only purpose of it is for us to bring about meaning into what we do now why are we talking about creativity we spoke about the myths we spoke about what it is we spoke about what it's not why are we speaking about creativity as we said earlier you're going into a world which is largely automated where there are going to be machines that are smarter than you where the only thing that's going to differentiate you is about how you can bring perspective 
But that is something that concerns you individually, not us as a society. What concerns us as a society is, we are going into a world where we have problems that we have never faced before. We have problems of pandemics, we have problems of pollution, we have problems of population, we have greenhouse gas problems, we have animal extinctions, we have AI ML problems. And these are problems that we've not faced for as a society before. And therefore, since we've not faced them before, there are no rules. There are no programs, there are no, no templates that we can follow. There's no bot that can solve these problems for us. The only hope that we stand is if, is if we can bring about our collective diversities and try to have a shot at these problems. The only hope is if we put our best creative foot forward. And we need creativity. We need to leverage our creativity to get to the bottom of these problems. Creativity is your perspective on the world around you. It is a divine force. It's a flow. It cannot be forced. It is not a competitive sport. It is not about the money. It's not about the applause. It is only about you. Creativity is you. Thank you.